everyone. Welcome to the podcast. This is Victoria English, head coach at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. I have an inspiring story. When we become alcohol free, all we know is that we've got to do something about our drinking. And what can unfold in our lives is unmappable and exciting. And today you're going to hear an incredible story. Karen Grunhofer is a graduate of Project 90, our 90 day program, Beyond 90, which is our year long program. And she's also now a member of our program called Boardroom, which is for our members who are beyond one year alcohol free and have such a growth mindset, such a desire to be lifelong learners that they are continuing with us and becoming powerhouses in their own right. <laughs> Karen is one of the board members, founding members of Awake Alcohol Exposed, a 501c3 nonprofit. Going through Project 90 is based on the science, the science of addiction, the science of habit, the science of change. And so as a member, you learn why we keep going back to alcohol, why you can take breaks, Karen did a podcast with James back in February, and I'll post the link to that episode. Her story is powerful. It was February 26th. I looked at February 26th. Uh, I'll have the link for you. And she was alcohol free, sober for three years, went back to drinking, and now is far from drinking now, uh, today because of our methodology and her investment in herself and the community. She also woke up, hence the name Awake, Alcohol Exposed. We help our members, we empower our members to see society for what it is. A, it is an altar of worshiping this poison that to some extent has decimated all of our lives until we made the choice to do something about it. And so today we're gonna to talk with Karen about the per her story and the purpose of Awake, Alcohol Exposed. She's gonna mention some of our other members who, are, who founded this. They are all graduates of our programs. Karen, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited and to share everything about Awake. Back when you returned to drinking, could you have ever imagined that you would be here as a founding member of a nonprofit to increase awareness around alcohol and make a change in the world? Absolutely not, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've always, I'm a change maker. I yes. believe I, I'm involved with, um, in the nonprofit. I mean, people could refer me as a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm involved with uh, several different nonprofits in different areas that I am passionate about. And so it just made sense to that I became so passionate about this my own journey that I wanted to share it with the world. And because I've really tried to be happy and alcohol-free since 2016, and it took me this long to really be completely free from alcohol, uh, I really felt, wow, I was around this, this area for a long time. I knew a lot of people in the recovery community, yet I really didn't know the resources that were out there um, beyond the, the, the formal method that I had been involved with, which was like traditional outpatient rehab mm -hmm. and then following an AA model and being involved with AA and um, which didn't work for me. So mm -hmm. that, and then, Finding AFL was a dream come true, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you've been a, a dream come true because you are so passionate. And uh, you're right. I guess it does make sense that coming to this point in your life that you would channel your skill set into becoming a change maker in this, in this world. And as I mentioned, the other board members are also Project 90 and Beyond 90 graduates. And... I think something so magical about our, our methodology is that you do finally get to take all of your attributes and use them. 
in, in creating a life beyond alcohol. One of the things that can be frustrating for our members as high achievers is surrendering, uh, admitting that they're powerless, that, that stuff doesn't resonate. And so when, when you level up and you become empowered, it makes sense that then you're going to say, okay, what's, what's next? Can you share with us a little bit about the skill set that your board is bringing to this mission? Yes, it's really exciting. So um, uh, one of our founders uh, was FinTech Woman of the Year. She, uh, it, so she brings, uh, you know, a really big marketing and sales background uh, in the technology industry. Um, and it, it just no, really ha has the ability to run an organization. As, and she is our executive director. Another member, is, founding member, is has actually founded a nonprofit. is an attorney, and uh, her nonprofit is soaring. In fact, it just got a grant from Mackenzie Scott's nonprofit, a big grant. Um, she's she had stepped down. Um, as she let it fly once it was evolved and had legs to go. It was in the immigration uh, area for um, for illegal um, residents on a path to uh, to be legal in this country. And mm -hmm. so um, in, in, in that regard, she had all the experience in the nonprofit world um, to really just get in and, and the legal side too. Uh, our secretary is another attorney in uh, Northern California and just full of energy. And uh, we have as our treasurer, um, a, a gal who, and, and even we are all women, but we're open to have, bring men in and everything. It was just, this is how it came together, um, partly because of the community within AFL and just how we connected and we're all passionate about it. Uh, but our, our treasurer, she um, is out of Ohio, has her own accounting firm and has about 40 employees and concentrates on small businesses, which is us. So, and my background, um, well, I was an international expat for 20 years and a stay-at-home mom, but then I got into the workforce. I'm a technology consultant. And, uh, but again, I serve on uh, three nonprofit boards. Um, I'm involved uh, heavily as kind of an ambassador level in um, human trafficking uh, worldwide and uh, trying to work with survivors. So uh, that kind of thing. So we just really complement each other and our energy, wow, it's, it's unstoppable. <laughs> that is true. It, it's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? We, James and, and our team, we put our messaging out there into social media and kind of into the ether. And it's amazing how we cross paths. Like what are the odds that you and these other women would have come into our program around the same time, connected on a personal level because our our community is based on vulnerability and trust and, and just a very, very deep connection. And those embers of, of like, okay, wow, I see now how I've been bamboozled and how I've been minimized and disempowered by this so-called sexy, fun, uh, empowering drink that smart, successful women enjoy. Uh, isn't it so cool that those embers created just enough spark to do what you're doing now? Oh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And, you know, you, you touched on the idea of being powerless. And of course that is part of the, the first step in AA, um, to admit that you're powerless and your life is unmanageable. And just to touch on that, like there's actually, um, proof in the journals of alcohol and, uh, drug addiction, that if you identify as being powerless, there's only a 50% chance you can be successful in a program that tells you you're powerless, mm -hmm. which is, it was in Nirael's book, actually indistractable. But, um, and so uh, when I heard that, I was like, well, gee, no wonder. Um, and I'm, this is not about, um, none of Awake is about AA bashing or anything like that. We, I love what AA does. I love 
um, you know, the community behind it. I have several friends that are involved in that community and everything. My only real issue is that when you are unsuccessful at AA, in AA, in their programming, the onus is always on you. You aren't doing it right. Uh, they never say, hey, you know what? This doesn't seem to be working for you. Why don't you try something else? Mm -hmm. And that bothers me because there are, you know, again, no size fits all or whatever. And I, I think there are many ways to find your path to an alcohol free life and yours based on the science of the addiction itself and understanding the science is so empowering and really, and then really bringing us to neuroplasticity so we can rewire our brains, uh, and it become I have become with alcohol like a former cigarette smoker becomes about cigarettes where mm -hmm. they can't smell it they can't you know I mean I'm around it all the time uh, socially so I mean it doesn't bother me definitely but like yeah it, when I start smelling it on people and whatever I'm kind of like ew um, and I never thought I would be that way because all through any sobriety that I had. I, I was white knuckling it for the most part. Yes. So the brain rewiring worked and I'm just, and just what's really interesting about AFL from the first 90 days and then the continued year is you watch um, that how the cycles work and there is a pattern within the cycles of where people are. Yes. And we had a lot of fun. I mean, when I get on the group meetings where everybody's on, you really see where they're at and you're like, oh, yeah. And it is good to remember. And, but it's also fun to watch the pattern of growth and learning and where you come. And the other part is, um, and we'll touch on it when we talk about awake, but, you know, when people do like dry January because they want to prove they're, they don't have a problem with alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, the big problem with dry January or taking the 30 days off, it's not enough time. Scientifically, we know that we need at least 90 days to get the alcohol out of our system. And so in 30 days, you're just starting to feel really, really crappy, quite honestly. <laughs> that <laughs> is like, why would I quit this? I feel worse than I did when I started. <laughs> that is very, very true. Yes, it, it, it was, it's always exciting to see uh, see people light up and feel energized and empowered, even if they're feeling crappy because they're yeah. detoxing from alcohol. But just to see that, that light bulb moment of, wait a minute, so I'm not defective. I'm not a bad person. I was drinking something that is socially expected. I say that instead of socially accepted, it's socially expected. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, it got its claws into me. And so what, what now? And that's the joy of coaching and, you know, being a member now for a long time, that's the joy of it is, okay, so here you are, this happened. What do you want now? How can you live your life today so that tomorrow the best version of you shows up and that best version might be moody and irritable and, and eating sugar and all the things or dealing with uncomfortable emotions. And that's okay. It's part of the process. But on the other side is a life of your creation instead of the life that alcohol told you you're allowed to have. You're allowed to be this, Karen. You're allowed to have this much energy. You're allowed to look this way. You're allowed to experience these emotions. Um, this is the quality of relationships you're allowed to have. So the freedom takes my breath away sometimes. It really, really does. I mean, just last night I went to the concert, a country, I went to see Dirk Bentley and I came home and I thought of something. I thought, you know, I don't think about drinking anymore. I don't, I don't consider it like going to a concert. It's like, there's no decision to be made. It doesn't enter my mind that I'm going to, if I'm going to drink or not. What does enter my mind every single day is that I don't drink and the gratitude that I have for that. 
100%. You know, and and uh, in this journey that um, AFL provides, I think one thing that from day one, you really, we start talking about um, the good old feelings wheel, but aligning ourselves with our real true beliefs and values. And in our drinking life, a lot of times we don't really align our whole life with how we really believe. Mm-hmm. And in this process, when we are like, moving into this growth and learning mindset, we actually really identify what's important to us that put me here now doing awake, but really just saying, I want to live my life according to my morals and values. And in that, what changes do I need to make? And what, how can I change the world? How can I fulfill my purpose? Mm -hmm. And all of that. And it's not, it doesn't feel like pressure. It feels like exciting. You know, it, there's so much excitement because it's about how I really feel and, and the energy is contagious. It is. And, uh, you're getting all those dopamine hits. I can see it. I I see, uh, I can see it in your face and you're very (laughs) animated right now because it's exciting. And for our listeners, you know, that is the key. When we are drinking, we get that big old dopamine dump. We get a hit of dopamine. That's why we feel euphoric and everything else. And at the concert last night, people are raising their beers. I'm raising up my big old 24 ounce uh, (laughs) smart water, but I was having the same amazing time. They're just high, right? The difference is the dopamine then declines rapidly. And so as I was walking back, leaving the venue last night, I'm feeling great. You know, my ears are buzzing. I'm, I'm thinking about all the songs. I'm talking with my, with my date about it. And, um, and then there's people walking beside me. I heard someone getting in a big argument. Another girl, (laughs) another girl was stumbling. One girl tripped and skinned her knee on the sidewalk. You know, she was in her cute little country skirt and boots and that, you know, she's got a knee that's bleeding and that's the difference. Right. And so, when you stop drinking, your brain learns over time and through practice, and that's why we have our community and support, learns how to make those dopamine levels, uh, healthy amounts of dopamine, so that you get that natural high, you get that excitement. And if you guys see this video, you'll see it in Karen's face. Like her dopamine receptors are, are banging right now. She's pumped. And that's the joy of releasing the substance, doing the work, going through the discomfort and finding out what's on the other side. So with this excitement, Karen, tell, tell us more about, about Awake Alcohol Exposed. Is it to convince people that they must be alcohol free, that that's, that's the thing, you gotta be alcohol free. Is that your mission? So originally we started out saying that's what we wanted, right? Okay. And- And then as we thought about it more, we really got together as a group and and we did a lot of discussion before we started really ironing out our mission and goals. We decided, no, we we don't want to take people's alcohol away. We just want people to know, to know that the health risks, the uh the that you do, that everything about alcohol that is really kind of negative in your life you should have all the information so then you can make your own informed decision and so we really are just wanting and that's why we originally were going to be awake alcohol um alcohol free and then we decided to be awake alcohol exposed which is really you know and and we we all compare it to the cigarette industry and back in the 60s when they really knew they they knew the medical and health ramifications of smoking cigarettes they hid it from the public for so long they can no longer do that uh, because of social media which is amazing but we already have the Health and Human Services rewriting. Um, they're going to uh, release new guidelines for drinking in the United States next year. And we already have the alcohol lobbying groups lobbying, saying, questioning the research from the World Health Organization about alcohol. Um, but the truth is coming out. The truth is already there. It's just not really released. We don't have doctors actually saying, hey, this stuff isn't isn't 
isn't great for you. You know, they, they, they touch on it. They say you want to reduce your alcohol or whatever, but you know, the interesting thing about Canada's new guidelines, Canada released new guidelines last year. And, um, they, they basically in the, it's an 80 page document. You can search it online under Canada's guidance on alcohol and health. But ultimately they say the guidance is based on the principle of autonomy and harm reduction and the fundamental idea behind it, that people living in Canada have the right to know all alcohol use comes with risk. Mm -hmm. All. And oh. so, you know, where we say right now, um, our CDC guidelines are two drinks a day for men, one drink a day for women. Canada's guidelines basically go through zero drinks per week uh, is really the best standard. Uh, two standard drinks per week or less, you're likely to avoid alcohol-related consequences for yourself or others at this level. Three to six standard drinks per week. So that's not even one drink a day. Your risk of developing several types of cancer, including breast and colon cancer, increase at this level. Mm -hmm. And then the seven standard drinks or more per week, your risk of heart disease or stroke increases significantly at this level. And then they go through, in their whole document, go through all the research and data on that. It's not like they're just saying it to say it. It's it, they've, they've done a lot of research on this. Mm -hmm. um, and then each additional standard drink after that, so let's say you're drinking two drinks, which is our guidelines right now, uh, uh, radically increase the risk of alcohol-related consequences, mm -hmm. which we all know about. Fatty liver, cirrhosis of yes. the uh, uh, pancreatitis, mm -hmm. um, all of Besides then, I mean, if you are a carrier of the BRCA gene and you are drinking, you are really playing with fire, period. So everyone should know that. Like, it's yes. just, you know, and so when we, you know, I'm on a board of a breast cancer nonprofit and we know you're a breast cancer survivor, big time. And, uh, and when we talk about, you know, when we have this like event where we're, you know, inviting everyone to raise money and then we're actually then, you know, handing everyone a cocktail and many of those are carrying the BRCA gene. Well, I mean, what are we doing? I mean, yes. you know, and so, uh, so that goes down to one of our goals, which is to just socially, uh, social acceptance of an alcohol-free life or reduction of alcohol. Alcohol just shouldn't be an issue. Whether you want it, you don't want it, it shouldn't be a discussion. No one should feel social pressure. No one needs liquid courage. Um, on the contrary, like social situations, like just video, have someone video you drinking three drinks or more at a social event and you'll realize, oh my gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> you know? Yes. So... so um, but that's so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Mm. No, I, 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 as you're saying this, uh, I'm just thinking of how relevant this is for our listeners. And so when, when we begin to develop issues with drinking, and of course, you know, it gets all of the, cog it creates cognitive dissonance, meaning there's two truths. There's the truth that that alcohol marketers have created for you. This is fun. This makes you sexy. This uh, makes you more sociable, more likable. Um, if you're on holiday, of course you have to drink. If it's a if it's a celebration, of course you need to drink. If you've had a stressful day, I mean, watch any TV show, right? They come in and they pour a drink. We have all been seeing that since we were children. And so we unconsciously adopt those beliefs. So we find ourselves drinking and then it becomes a problem. And we have cognitive dissonance and we feel shame because we think, wait a minute, my drinking doesn't look like the movies, the ads. It doesn't look like the snapshot I see of other people drinking, which again, it's just a snapshot. We don't know. They could have had three drinks before they got there. They could be going home early to have four more drinks. But my drinking doesn't look like it's, quote, supposed to. What's wrong with me? And it's incredible, isn't it, Karen, how much suffering and how the lengths we will go to to make our drinking look like it does on TV. 
So if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're doing is saying, look, here's an opportunity to gather information so that you can see alcohol exposed. You can see this substance for what it is. You can begin to understand why you continue to increase your amounts of drinking. Why when you promise yourself, your loved ones, whatever, that you're not going to drink, you do. And that way, you can make an informed decision and come out of that torturous cognitive dissonance of what's wrong with me? Why doesn't my drinking look like this storyline created by people who are taking our money? Right? You can find oh, your yeah. truth. Well, so that's the real issue with um, the term alcoholic. Alcoholic yes. comes with a preconceived idea. First, I'm an alcoholic. And then the next response would be, oh, I'm sorry. Is like, yes. or, oh, poor you. You can't drink. Poor like you. Alcohol. Yes. Oh, I have to hide my alcohol from you because you're at risk. You know, like, I'm Yes. Uh, I can't, you know, is it okay if I drink in front of you? Um, yes. All of the like preconceived ideas. And ultimately that as, as, as a disease that you, it, it's a weakness you have, like, mm -hmm. and the alcohol industry loves that. I say that in my other interview with James, where it's just like, you guys over here, you guys are alcoholics, you can't drink, but everyone else, you guys are happy and you can drink. <laughs> You don't have to worry that it's a class one carcinogen, that it's linked to all these different diseases. Yes. Queer health, you know, all of that. And so they like that terminology. So that's they love why it. they, they, it, that's another why it gives, gives, gives it energy, right? Cause there's so much money behind the idea of that. And that's another thing that we want to dispel that um, there is alcohol abuse disorder uh, alcoholic, whether you, I mean, I have a belief and it's very personal that it really, there really is no such thing as an alcoholic. There's people who have alcohol use disorder. Mm -hmm. I was definitely one of them. And now I don't, so I don't have to identify with an incurable disease for the rest of my life. I'm not in remission of anything of a disease and it, it's a self-diagnosis anyways. A doctor doesn't tell you, you don't take a test. And the variability of, of uh, inappropriate drinking, you know, too much drinking or binge drinking versus, you know, like what kind mm -hmm. of drink you are is massive. And it's just, again, not a one size fits all how, mm -hmm. how you drink and, you know, whatever. Uh, the real bottom line is, is alcohol free, alcohol free means freedom from the thinking and and that's like what we want to get across too, is that you can live in moderation for sure. And people, plenty of people can and do, um, and very few, there, a lot of people are able to just do that. Like one drink a month and, oh yeah, I'm kind of holding it. I don't really care if I drink it, you know, whatever. But the majority of people drink to drink, like it's part yes. of it's, it's, it's the goal of the night. It's going to fix my anxiety. It's going to fix my sleep. It's going to, it's a fix all, um, and everything. And, yeah. and that's, that's kind of what we want to dispel is that this over here, we all have the potential to have alcohol use disorder based on how the, the science of it being a class one carcinogen and how the addiction works in our brain, right? It's a highly, and, highly addictive drug. Exactly. Uh, you've heard me say, Karen, you've heard me, <laughs> I can't believe you still listen to me, but here you are. <laughs> um, but you've heard me say, if you're, a, if you're a human being with a brain, you can become addicted to some extent to alcohol. And mm -hmm. it is a spectrum. And we start out, when you start out on that spectrum, if you continue to drink, you're going to move farther along that spectrum. And so it, with this awareness, with, with being willing, and this is part of it for our listeners, being willing to look at it because mm -hmm. it can be an uncomfortable truth right? to say, wait a minute, 
So there is indisputable evidence that even small amounts of alcohol increases my risk of breast cancer. That's really hard to know. And it's true, right? Um, if you're willing to look at it, at least then you are making an informed decision because we are a lot, we are intelligent, successful people, and we don't like being told how to live. And the truth is alcohol and the out big alcohol has been telling us how we're supposed to live. And so if you're willing to look at this information, you may choose to continue to drink, or you may explore the many, many different paths to changing your relationship with alcohol. And as you hear me say on the podcast, we may be that path for someone. We may not, and that is okay. But just becoming curious enough to take a look is is so important. It's such a huge step. I know, Karen, that you... Um, you know, as you just mentioned, destigmatizing living alcohol free is part of your mission. And you also uh, aim to be a resource for helping people find their path to changing their relationship with alcohol on their own terms. Can you speak to that a bit? Yeah. So, I mean, the information is there, but how do we get to it? And I just use myself as, as an example, and this is a real big reason why I've chosen this path is that it took me years to find AFL, which mm -hmm. seems crazy, right? And so, and yeah, because I had the desire to be alcohol free for so long. And so we want to just be the one stop shop, like, oh, if you're questioning your thing and you search, you know, so what's the first thing people search? Like, how much is too much? Or, you know, yes. like, yeah. am I an yes. alcoholic? Or, you yes. know, whatever it is all these searches we hope to be one of the top things that come up so then people and we'd like we'd like to have an interactive um test almost that can kind of say like where you sit with your drinking yeah and then you know maybe um some kind of like kind of uh explanation of checks of like you know where you want to be what's your goal and your goals can change because you might find that yeah i started just wanting to reduce a little and then i realized wow maybe going all the way alcohol free is for me maybe it's not and and that's again the resources and the resources are just really alternatives to tradition which is of course aa i mean we we have judges who assign uh, DUI uh, convictions uh, with AA um, with AA uh, we have to go to X amount of AA meetings and kind of thing and that's really not necessarily the right fit for people right and right and then of course insurance that covers uh, that covers uh, re traditional rehab which can be up to fifty to a hundred thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars uh, you know, why not? Why shouldn't insurance cover other kinds of treatment, meaning coaching, meaning program, yes, that kind of thing. So we want to open the doors to alternatives to what is traditional. And we want that those resources to be there. So we really want to create relationships with um, with everyone out there that's doing this work, because there's a lot of people doing it, private coaching uh, programs like ours, we we all know and that community is important. So creating mm -hmm. communities, that kind of thing. So we just want to be non-objective. Uh, I mean, we want to be objective. <laughs> we want to be objective and yes. we stay objective to be resources for books. I mean, I can't believe no one ever told me about the book "Quit Like a Woman" by Hillary Whitaker. It's phenomenal for. It's a, amazing. It's actually phenomenal for men, women, all across the board. Anyone. It's such a good book, and it she's she, and even listening to it and her voice is phenomenal. But that book in itself is like her journey. It's her personal journey. It's not going to be everyone's journey, but it really connects you to all the things she tried to mm -hmm. get all the bad stuff out of her life, not just the one thing. And mm -hmm. so resource, because there's, I mean, I have a list a mile long of books about learning and growth that have to do with me living a better life 
through the program um, of, of AFL. We are constantly, and it doesn't mean you have to read a book a day or anything like that, but it is, we want the resources. We want like the access to the um, lists of podcasts, lists of books, lists of different yes. programming, and then you can make your own decision. You can go down your own rabbit hole. And once you start looking at different ones, you'll find others and, and you can find what, what, what you feel comfortable with. And, Bingo. you know, and, and even like a program like a, a alcohol free lifestyle, it, it's a, it's the program. Everyone gets a little something different out of it. And we're all, even though we tend to be all high achievers, um, we really have all types of personalities too. And, Absolutely. and, and that kind of thing. So, um, and I think you said this morning in an earlier meeting about when someone actually is doing an autopsy of, uh, of someone's body, everyone's liver looks the same. If they are a big drinker and the cirrhosis is there, that we don't know what their education level is or where they grew up or anything like that. And, and that is absolutely true. Uh, yes. Alcohol does not discriminate. That's for it sure. Does not discriminate. So the resources is just to stay objective so you can find the path that you want to follow. And, um, you know, at some point we'd love to, you know, you know, host things, have partnerships with uh, different groups and, and uh, just spread the word. So that's it's one. so um, exciting. Which it's is, so, yeah. If I had found that, like, you know, in 2016, it, when I started this journey, I might, it might have just found it a little sooner, but you know, your path is your path and you learn as you go. I'm, you know, I, I probably needed to go through what I did because I really did a lot of soul searching through that time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the thing is, we really learned that most people have some kind of trauma in their life. It can be, a, there's two types of trauma, which is one like a big event or one that is like happening daily, which could be yes. in, in their youth or something like that. And you bury it so deeply. And mm -hmm. when you start feeling discomfort, that's when you do whatever it is, whether it's drinking or drugs or eating or yes. you know, gambling, you're trying to just get distract yourself from that yucky feeling. That pain. And so, so yeah, so the resources of how to learn how to to work through that because ultimately that's what it's all about is really figuring that out. That mm -hmm. that's what gets you out of um the drinking. Yes, in my opinion. I mean, that's an opinion, but I, you know, and so whatever people, whatever it takes, it takes work though. And it's a little <laughs> scary because you think, and that's why we also said, let's not do alcohol free alcohol exposed works better because, you know, um, sometimes the thought, I mean, if you told me 10 years, you're never going to, you're going to spend a big part of your life being completely alcohol free. I would not have believed it. Right. I, I had no ability to imagine my life without alcohol. It was so ingrained in everything that I did. Mm -hmm. so, so that brings us back to a word that stands out to me. You know, my ears are tend to be very large and I pick up on key words and the key word I, I heard was choice. You are presenting choices. If you're listening to this podcast, chances are, to some extent, it might be creeping in or it might be just your actual daily reality. You feel that you've lost the choice to drink or not drink. Uh, alcohol has the majority voting power. And that is a miserable feeling to say, I, I, I just drink. I drink when I feel like it. I drink when I don't feel like it. I drink when I'm happy. I drink when I'm sad, when I'm stressed, when I'm resentful, when I'm so alcohol is calling the shots. That's a tough place to live. And that brings us back to the cognitive dissonance of like, how, how did I get here? How did, you know, you're talking about the, the founding members. I mean, how did this incredibly intelligent, powerful, group of women, how did they find themselves in that position? But you did. And so did I, how can I be successful and smart in this area? And I can't do anything about the drinking that brings us back to choice. No one likes to feel like they don't have a choice. And so what Karen's talking about is giving you options. What would it feel like to click on that website and say, what options are out there? 
what if I did have a choice? What if I did have a say in what my relationship with alcohol looks like? Because it's such a slow decline. It's so insidious. And so, you know, for our listeners, Karen and I have been there. How did I get here? Why am I drinking again after what just happened? And so, again, this isn't about saying goodbye to alcohol forever. It's not even committing to anything. It's just being open to, could it be different? Is there something out there that could empower me so that alcohol isn't making decisions for me? Right. And, 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 and when you say pick up on a word and choice, so choice in how you go about it and what you're going to mm-hmm. do and then choice of what's available out there. I mean, yes. It, so obviously our, econ- our world is run by consumerism, consumer marketing and everything. And so supporting the NA industry, non-alcoholic drink community mm-hmm is really important um, part that I would say that would be a really big, big second goal we're trying to achieve is to increase yes. access to alcohol-free beverages everywhere you go. Like oh, I'm, yes. out there, I'm so happily drinking any different types of drinks. I'm having so much fun with it. Uh-huh. And a lot of, and I think I, I've, I've, I've done it less now, but you know, all, there's so many great NA beers out there. There's so many, I mean, the community's on fire. Heineken oh, Zero has come in and sponsored formula one racing. So they're starting to see the shift in market share. And that's not just in the United States, Europe of all places, England. I mean, I was in the south of France uh, just a few months ago, and when I asked for an NA beer, he was like, "Yeah, we have some." <laughs> you know? Yes. And we're really excited, and and I was in Amsterdam, and I'm like, "Do you have any NA availability?" And they brought me an NA menu that was probably ten pages of different types of drinks. Wow. They had out NA wines, NA uh, mocktails, they had kombuchas. You know, a variety yes. of different things that you could drink in, as alternative. And so when we, again, say we want to meet you where you're at, you should have choice when you go into a restaurant and we should Mm -hmm. demand choice and everything. I mean, I, every restaurant I go into, when I see zero alcohol free options, I'm like, you're missing a a big market here. And it's just growing. I do Um, the same. I do the same. Yeah, it's great. But that's, so that is a big part of our goal is to create these relationships with the NA brands and then to promote them and to get them out in the world. Uh, at, uh-huh. at, at concerts, at, I mean, at concerts, you go and there's one NA option. Um, yes. Like, you know, I was in Belize a couple weeks ago and not one NA, I mean, they can make me mocktails, but yes, beers or alternative alcohols. Um, and, um, and, you know, so we want this to be a worldwide thing too. We want to put pressure on the, um, business owners and we already understand that um the the there beside so it's obna is the association that is for the alcohol uh na industry and mm-hmm. we want them to um we just want to like partner with them and really just have access so i for see example, it happening yeah for example like we run um one of the nonprofits I'm involved with run, we run an alcohol concession at a uh, golf tournament, Tiger Woods Genesis Invitational. And, the, you know, I'm just pushing them to, to give us NA options because there isn't even an NA beer and people come up and ask mm-hmm. and it's not available. So, you know, we want, we, we just want choice for people and everyone can be involved in this process by just, it's always polite. I just ask a manager, would you like some feedback? They yes. ultimately will almost always say yes. And then I'm really nice, but I just say, hey, you know, I'm, I live an alcohol-free life. I'd love to have more options and I'm yes. willing to pay for it too. So you can, mm-hmm. you can give me water and I'll pay nothing, or you can give me, a, <laughs> I mean, I've seen $15 mocktails on the menu and I order them. I mean, heck yeah. I mean, I am saving a lot of money on those restaurant bills. I'll tell you that much, not drinking uh, alcohol, but regardless, like I like choice and even, and again, it's not a social stigma for me, but it's even just having a nice glass. Like why? Because a fancy not, glass. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because you're NA, you're alcohol free that you can't have 
a normal glass. I mean, we all have our stories. <laughs> yes, yes. Situation. So yep. the goal is here is to really just choice, choice, choice everywhere you go. Um, and that just because you are, you're not choosing an alcohol-free life, but you you go, yeah, at, when I go to an afternoon uh afternoon tea or lunch that's Mm -hmm. a fundraiser or a business uh, gathering, I'd like to have an NA option. I'd like to have a phone and have a little champagne glass and do cheers with everyone. Like, why not? And Mm -hmm. it, it it doesn't exist, but we, it's just, it's happening. We're chipping away. We're chipping away. And so, you know, uh, instead of, uh, for our listeners, instead of thinking of, of yourself as, you know, the, the, the weirdo who can't drink or, you know, um, I have a problem. So do you have something else? Imagine like Karen saying, being part of a trailblazing movement, like, isn't that kind of exciting? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that you have to be like me and, you know, put your story out there and be on podcasts and social media and articles and all that. It doesn't mean that you have to go found, be a founder of a nonprofit to change the narrative and create change in the world. What it does mean is that you can show up at an event and, and advocate and have a choice as to how the rest of your day plays out instead of, well, I'm at this lunch and so I have to drink or I can't drink. So I have to sit here and be miserable. What if you're part of of a revolution, whether it's within your own little world or something bigger to say, I choose something better for me. And I'm not weird. I'm simply making a healthier choice for myself. It's not, it's not a stigmatized thing. It's just something that is serving me in a, in a better way for the life that I want. What a mindset shift. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's so funny because, uh, we, we both, you live in Colorado. I live in California. Very, um, we're surrounded by health and wellness everywhere we go and, um, a healthy lifestyle. And yet drinking is still part of the healthy lifestyle. (laughs) Oh yeah. And it's just so funny because, well, all you have to do is listen to Huberman's podcast on this, on, on alcohol. And I Mm -hmm. really want to understand the science. Um, Yes is is we throw that all out the window the minute we take a drink oh everything we're doing everything oh i know i know i know it's 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 crazy but but again it is so empowering and and just going back to the the verbiage too is is i have had so much enjoyment claiming life alcohol free like i am a yes I'm excited. People lean in. They're interested. They want to know more. How? How did you do that? Never. Yeah. I'm like, well, today in the present, I don't see myself doing it. I, I really am. Again, I, I, I now feel towards alcohol like a former cigarette smoker would feel. Yeah. I think. But, um, but regardless, like it's a lean in moment. Whereas when I, if I have in the past said, yes, I'm an alcoholic. Um, Mm -hmm. oh, 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 and and, well, yeah. And for me, I mean, those, and then people feeling sorry for me often were drinking more than I ever did. Oh yeah. You know, I'm like, damn, you put me to shame the way you're drinking, but I'm the weirdo. I'm the one that everyone has to tiptoe around, you know? And I'm like, um, I've seen your Instagram posts and, uh, (laughs) But that's neither here nor there. It's a personal choice. And I I do think, um, again, that that just showing up in that way of saying, look, I it just it's something that didn't serve me and making it neutral the same way that, you know, you've heard me compare it to my my decision to be gluten free because I have some gut issues and it made me feel terrible. And so, you know, creating that just neutral conversation, like, yeah, it didn't feel good, um, right. can invite yes. so much curiosity and possibly empowerment for the people around us. Yeah. And the term, that's the problem with the term alcoholic, because no one mm-hmm. wants to identify with that. 
No. Um, no, I mean, you will hear people in meeting in AA meetings saying I'm a grateful alcoholic, but more than likely people, most people aren't happy about identifying that way. Right. And, um, and I think it really deters people because mm-hmm. the first reaction is defensive. Oh no. And I don't have a problem. Yeah. I don't have a problem. And, and you don't, and that is the point too, is that you do not have to have a problem, an addiction, anything yeah. to, to just say, this is not serving me. Right. I want to be alcohol free because it doesn't I, feel good. <laughs> I am a hundred percent sleeping better. I'm a hundred percent. I, you know, zero anxiety. Oh, yeah. Zero like um, overreaction to things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I am living my best life. And I will honestly say, this past year and a half has really been since day one of alcohol free lifestyle has has changed my whole life view and it is really exceptional so cheers to that karen (laughs) cheers to that and you guys are just getting started and you know you can look at james uh back when he made his choice to become alcohol free and started out as 30 days then he went to a year like what the heck and then he got to a year he was going to celebrate with a beer he smelled it and said ew and i feel amazing and then started out with just one person that he coached through a 30 day break from alcohol and look at us now. And so every movement starts with just that ember, which Mm -hmm. turns into a spark, which turns into a flame. And that's what you ladies are doing. So, uh, I am thrilled to, (laughs) to see it, you know, having met all of you when you first came in and and to just see what you're doing and to be engaged with you and assisting however I can. And it's just going to, it's going to turn into whatever it's meant to be. And I think that's so exciting. Well, yeah, um, and I just encourage everybody to literally please follow us on social media. Um, yes. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, there, we're, we're on all three uh, forums. And maybe I could give you the links to put in the podcast. I will put all of their links in the podcast. So when you go to the show notes, you're going to find all the ways to find Awake Alcohol Exposed. And let's see what happens. Yeah. Uh, And ultimately our goal, I mean, our kind of uh, plan is to really build the social media following because that's extremely important to then create the relationships with maybe possibly health insurance companies. Absolutely. uh, with with the medical community with the na brands because as we build that presence then we can go in and start negotiating you know like an an example of a goal a a goal for next year will be that we're at every susan g komen run we have a tent that says yes our tent says um come over we give them information uh, just information about the relationship between alcohol and development of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And then we possibly offer any alternatives to try and just to promote the social aspect, the health aspect and the encouragement of, of just alcohol freedom and, uh, and choice and and education, 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 education is empowerment. Period. I love it. I love it. So this is the call to action for, <laughs> yes. for our listeners. Uh, there's a few things you can do. If uh, what Karen is sharing about her personal journey resonates with you, you can book that free discovery call. It's 15 minutes. That's what Karen did. She had a 15 minute conversation and look where she is now. So back to curiosity, book the call. Let's see, maybe we're a fit, maybe we're not. And that's okay. But just that First step is huge. The next one is, do you know someone? Are you someone who may want to team up with Awake Alcohol Exposed? Who do you know that could assist them, right? Let's see what this turns into. It's so exciting. Uh, And we're just getting started. So Karen, I can't thank you enough. Uh, You're an incredible member, an incredible friend, a support to others in our community. And I, you're on fire. I can't wait to see where you guys go. Thanks. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And we're all accessible. Um, uh, and even through Awake or 
under my at Karen Grunhofer. You can DM me if you want to know information. Mm -hmm. You want we need we need armies. We yes. are gonna, we are gonna need a volunteer uh, armies every all over the world. So yep. And that in itself, like we want it, we have to build that volunteer army that we want out there um, speaking on our behalf in any aspect. So um, let's get after it as well. Let's get after it. Yes. Again, all these resources will be in the show notes awesome. and I can't wait to see what happens. All right, guys, until next time, take good care. Have a great day.